Welcome to the tutorial for estimating roots. We know that 3 squared equals 9. So we can also write that the square root of 9 equals 3. The same applies to 3 cubed, which equals 27. Or we can write it as the cubed root of 27 equals 3. And again, we can do the same thing for 3 to the exponent 4 equals 81, or the fourth root of 81 equals 3. What we've written is what we call a radical. So the square root sign, the whole thing is called the radical. The exponent, or we talk about the fourth root, cube root, and the square root, that's where the n is here on our radical, and that's called the index. Then the inside here is called the radicand. If I can spell it properly. There we go, R-A-D, radicand. You need to know the parts of the radical. The fact that n is the index and the x inside the square root sign is the radicand, but the whole thing is called the radical. This will be important for later. Now, if you're asked to estimate, so say the question asked you to estimate two consecutive square root, perfect squares closest to the square root of 20. How do we attack this? Well, let's go with what we know. So I know that the square root of 16 equals 4. And I know the square root of 25 equals 5. So obviously, 16 is, that's too low, and 25 is too high. So that means that the square root of 20 is going to lie somewhere between 4 and 5. So let's have a look at different numbers between 4 and 5. So I'm going to try. These are my guesses. I'm going to try some guesses. And the first one, because it's looking like 20 is almost exactly in the middle between 4 and 5, I'm going to start with 4.5. That's, that's what I'm going to start with. So I'm going to do a check. And I'm going to say that 4.5 squared and that equals 20.25 because I'm saying it's about approximately. Now my second guess is going to be 4.4. So now I'm going to check. I'm going to check 4.4 squared and if I use my calculator that actually comes out to 19.36. Now which one? 19.36 or 20.25? Which one is closest to 20? Well it's this one here. The 20.25 is closer than 19.36. So that I'm going to write it as the square root of 20 is approximately 4.5. It's not exactly, so I can't put it as equal to, but it's approximately. Now, what if I was asked to estimate two consecutive perfect cubes closest to the cube root of 20? I'm going to follow the same logic. What do I know? Well, I know that the cube root of 8 equals 2, and I know that the cube root of 27 equals 3. So the cube root of 8 is actually too low, because I'm looking for cube root of 20, and cube root of 27, that's too high. It's 27, so way higher than 20. So now I'm going to try some guesses. So for my, I'm going to try some guesses. So for my guess, I'm going to try first 
if I take 2.5, I'm going to see what that comes out to. So 2.5 cubed actually comes out to 15.625. Now I've done that on my calculator because I'm not going to do the mental math here. The next I'm going to try is 2.6 cubed and I get a little higher, 17.576. Still not getting close enough, I don't think, because I want to get to 20. So I'm actually going to try 2.8 cubed and that comes out to 21. 0.952. Hmm, that's over. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to try 2.7 cubed. And that gives me 19.683. So because the 21.952 and the 19.683, those ones are the closest from my guesses. And sometimes they end up trying more than two guesses. So that means for my estimate, the cubed root of 20 is around, I think it's closer to 2.7 because 0.683 is closer than 21.952. So it's around 2.7 and that would be my, my estimate. Answer. Therefore, the estimate of cubed root of 20 is approximately 2.7. Now you can check on your calculator and you would find that the cubed root of 20 on your calculator actually comes out to be 2.714. That's very close to 2.7. Very close to the estimate. The next thing you need to do is when we're looking at our radicals is we need to figure out if the value of the radical is rational or an irrational number. We need to have our definitions down pat on our number systems. So we need to know exactly what a rational number is. Now a rational number can have a decimal. So rational numbers, they have decimals. And can either terminate or repeat. Miss Carla, what do you mean by terminate or repeat? Well, this is where it comes into us knowing our numbers. So an example, the square root of four equals two. That's exact. So it terminates, it's rational. What about the square root of 1.44? The square root of 1.44 is 1 1.2. It terminates, it's rational, and it can have a decimal. 1.2 is allowed. What if it's the square root of 9 over 16? Well, that equals 3 over 4. And in decimal form, 0 0.75. It terminates, is a decimal, it's rational. What if it's the square root of 16 over 81? Well, that equals 4 over 9, which is equal to 0 0.4 repeating. It's a decimal, and Rational numbers can repeat, so 0.4444444 is allowed. It's a rational number. How about you try? The cubed root of 125. Is it rational? Yes or no? And then try the square root of 0 0.24. Is it rational or not based on the definition? Pause the video, come back with the answer. Welcome back. The cubed root of 125 is 5, so yes, that is rational. 
the square root of 0 0.24, it equals 0 0.4898979, and it keeps going. And your, if you did it in your calculator, you'll see it keeps going. This is not rational. Well, if it's not rational, then what is it? It's actually called an irrational number. Because the irrational number, it cannot be written as a fraction. And I'm going to generalize that. So that means it cannot be written in the form of m over n. And we have to stipulate what m and n are. And m and n are integers. And n cannot equal 0 because it's in the denominator. You cannot have the denominator equal 0 in a fraction. As well, irrational numbers can have, they have decimals, or as we like to say, the decimal representation. of an irrational number. Neither, and this is the big difference, neither terminates nor repeats. So from the one you tried of 0 0.24, there's no repeating and it's not terminating, so it's actually an irrational number. Some other examples of irrational numbers. The most famous one that you've encountered thus far for an irrational number that you would have dealt with in previous math questions is the number pi. So we know it's 3.14, and we keep going, 1, 5, 5, 2, 6, 5, 3, 5, 8, 9, 7, 9, 3, and it keeps going. That's the most famous irrational number that you would have dealt with up to now. Another example would be the cubed root of 9. If you put that into your calculator, it equals 2.08008, and it keeps going. So again, it has a decimal, it's not terminating, so it's not stopping, and it doesn't repeat the numbers. Another one that will come back um, in our lessons in the future is the square root of 2. And that equals 1.4142135678. Now let's give you a couple to try. Is the square root of one third irrational or rational? And then try the fourth root of 12. Pause the video, try those on your calculator, come back for the answers. Welcome back. I hope you saw that the square root of one third equals 0 0.577350269 and it keeps going. And so it's irrational. And the fourth root of 12 comes out to 1.861297 and keeps going. Again, not repeating and it's not stopping. It is irrational. Other numbers that we have to look, are, look at with radicals is what happens if the radicand is a negative number. What does that mean? Well, let's take the cube root of negative 27. Can you work that out? 
The answer is yes. We know that a negative times a negative equals a positive. A negative times a positive equals a negative. But if you have three negatives in a row, what happens? We know a negative times a negative times a negative equals a negative. Because these two equal positive. And then a positive times a negative is a negative. So that means in the cube root of negative 27, that means it actually equals negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. Or you can write it as negative 3 cubed. Do the same for this cubed root of negative 64. What is the answer? The answer is negative 4. And it's the same principle. We have negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4. That cubed equals negative 64. So the same would apply. I'm going to get rid of the cubed here because I didn't write that in the same manner as in B. So again, a negative times a negative becomes a positive times a negative means the answer is negative. Now, we can also do the same thing for estimating with negative radicands. So if we use the cubed root of negative 27 and the cubed root of negative 64, we can estimate the cubed root of negative 50. So let's try and guess in the same manner as we did earlier. So I know the number has to be somewhere between 3. It's going to be between negative 3 and negative 4. Just because I know from A and B example. So I'm going to try with the cube root of negative 50. So let's try about negative 3.6. I'm going to try that one. And then the second one I'm going to try is going to be negative 3.7. Now I have to test them for my test check. So in my test check, I have negative 3.6 cubed, and then I'm going to test check negative 3.7 cubed. Now, if I put negative 3.6 cubed into my calculator, it comes out to being 46.7. 656. And if I put negative 3.7 cubed into my calculator, it comes out to negative 50.653. This one is too low, and this one is slightly too high. So because I'm estimating, I want to I know it's going to be closer to 3. Point, it's going to be closer to 3.7 because 50.6653 is closer to negative 50 than negative 46.656. I can also show this on a number line. So here's my negative 4 and I have my negative 3 on my number line. And if I count 3.1, so here's negative 3.1 and negative 3.2 and I keep going down. 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. And negative 3.7 is slightly, I said, too high. So that means I'm going to be somewhere just before it. And this number here is the cube root of negative 50, just before the negative 3.7. Now, I've used the word integers, I've used the word rational numbers, and irrational numbers in this tutorial. You need to know how the number systems are related. So we know that the real numbers encompass everything. My irrational numbers 
are sort of out on the side, but they're still included in real numbers. I have my rational numbers. And my rational numbers include the integers, which also includes whole numbers. and the natural numbers. So we have irrational numbers sorta outside, but the rational numbers include everything underneath. So the integer numbers, the whole numbers, and the natural numbers. And real numbers encompasses rational, integers, whole numbers, natural numbers, and irrational numbers.